And if I can um, bring Samuel and Claire back in, and we can talk very quickly generally about the issues facing you as designers in the UK at the moment. I mean, what uh, do you consider to be the sort of big challenges you need to grapple with now and over the next couple of years? And also, what are the opportunities that really interest you? So starting with you, Samuel. Um, I, I, for me, it was always trying to kind of uh, go for clients that are way outside my remit. I mean, I started to travel around Europe, go to trade shows, get to know people. Because design's kind of quite a globalized thing, you know, and you can work just as tightly as somebody, somebody in Shenzhen as somebody in Lancashire. Um, and, 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 uh, and to make a kind of a business as a designer is not easy. So you need to just look at all options. Um, so for me, it was looking globally. Um, and and that, was, that was the way that it's helped me kind of expand and, and do very different types of projects depending on who you're working with. Um, and it sounds as though you're not tempted to pursue the entrepreneurial route as Claire and, and Nicholas have done. I think a lot of other designers have done that because it, commercially it can be a, a lot more beneficial and maybe e not easier but d different. Um, I love being a designer and I don't want to give that up. So, um, and I feel like now it takes a long time to get to respect to work with bigger and bigger manufacturers in the very kind of specific area. And, and now I've developed that portfolio that doors are opening more and more. Even if you win awards, it doesn't matter. You just need to build this portfolio that people respect that. Um, and, and that's happening at the moment, so that's really exciting. And Claire, what, what for you, again, the challenges and, and the I opportunities? Think, I think uh, a challenge, challenges at the moment, uh, I think as I've, I've worked sort of direct with retailers and things, I think retail is quite a weird space at the moment. I think retail is, um, you know, it's changing massively from be becoming that, you know, the, the and, and, as, and as consumers, we're buying things in very different ways than we did before. So previously kind of going into stores and then come, kind of taking objects away is a very different space. But, but actually, because of the way that people are buying things these days, actually, as a designer, being able to produce your own objects, it is allowing you more of a platform that you don't have to go through um, those sort of formal retail channels anymore. That, and that's quite an interesting space to be in. Really. Totally, I think yeah. that's really important. You know, I do entrepreneurial stuff. We work with small manufacturers and you help them launch marketing and everything like that. And I think now through things like Kickstarter, it allows mm. somebody, anyone, if they've got a great idea and they can make a little video of it, they could 3D print it. It doesn't have to be the real object. But you can sell that to a global audience get people really invested in it and then make the project. That's fantastic. That, that didn't happen before. So anyone can do that. And that's the exciting thing now. And that, I think that leads to more innovation because big companies get set in their processes of how they develop things. And where take a long time to develop yeah. things. Take, you know, working seasons and seasons in mm. advance, whereas you can do things quite quickly. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting yeah. that um, Nicholas was groaning about taking three years to do both <laughs> the one and the <laughs> three. I mean, a friend who's a product designer works for Floss, which is one of the mm. world's most prestigious lighting manufacturers in Italy. They take anything up to eight years mm. to get a designed to industrial production, which obviously yeah. is massively frustrating for the hapless designer. Especially when you're waiting for royalties. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, then you wait another eight years for those. So um, again, for you, Nicholas, what are the, you've obviously, with Pluman, I mean, you've had a wonderful success at grappling with a political and social issue you really care about, and producing really ingeniously designed products that have made a difference and are working commercially. I mean, are the challenges for you to sort of do that, but on a larger scale and better, or are there other issues you want to grapple with? Well, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's still so little. <laughs> and, and for us, the, and for me, the, 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 the struggle is to get it on a footing where we, we don't have 10 ideas in the wings that we can't launch just because of, we don't have the resources to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just it's such a thrill to make stuff and get it out there. And, and you know, there are, you know, we've got a bunch of ideas and because of this timing thing, you know, you are conscious. I mean, I think for, for Smart, we would, you know, we've got one kind of ready to go, but it's just, it's too much of a, too much of a stretch to get it out. Um, but, you know, there is a risk you miss, you, know, you kind of miss the boat with these things. Um, Do you manufacture at all in the UK? We don't, no, we don't, we don't. Um, light bulbs have, 
you can't manufacture. I think there's only there's one factory in Germany. I think we looked at nothing in the UK anymore. Has, has moved moved out a long a long time ago. I mean, it was one of the one of the uh, one of the things that left earlier. You might you might get there might be some new kind of craft bulbs going on. I'd imagine there are somewhere. some small places. Yeah. I think, but doing anything of any scale to make a price point. You no, although we one one thing we are we do already almost by sort of accident. Um, is we work with an Italian 3D printing business um, called Formalized, and they, I basically run the Pinterest board because I'm just interested, and it's like, you know, I try to feed my sensibilities, so I just, I, you know, I kind of run the board because I get to see everything, and I get to see all the new stuff flowing through, and also get a sense of how, what people feel about things because of the way they comment, and, you know, I just kept seeing this, this uh, thing called a Cayenne, which is a little 3D printed shade, really lovely little thing. And I just wrote them an email, I said, love your thing, do you reckon, do you, can you do one that's just like a bit more kind of framing the plumen because it was perforated, so you could see the shape of the, 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 the light bulb, but it just kicked back, pushed back the, the glare a bit for, for, for certain applications. One week later, it turned up as an object in a box. And it was like, whoa, and it wasn't, it wasn't quite right, so we just sort of said, maybe a bit, and then, you know, one week later it turned up. It was like, should we just start selling these things? Like, yeah, sure. So we just figured out a little price model for it, and then you can order it off the website, and then they print it and send, stick it in the post. Mm -hmm. It's just awesome. So we, we're actually doing, we're working on a project with a, with a, a Brunel, um, uh, it's got, he's in the graduating year, and we'll be doing a 3D printing, kind of a printed, um, uh, shade with him, which we will, you know, we'll, ma I mean, not just manufacture in the UK, we'll just manufacture wherever the demand comes from. So if somebody orders it, in Aust I mean, we, it will take us a while to set it up, but I think the principle is interesting, which is if somebody orders in Australia, we'll print it in Australia. Could you talk very quickly about um, working from Preston yeah. and what the pros and cons have, have been? Yeah, I think um, working in Preston, I think you are part of a quite a small community, which is a very supportive community. Um, and um, I think within Preston, you kind of... I think, well, I think travel is so easy now. Getting to London in a couple of hours is, is no problem at all. Um, and I think... Being, yeah, being, just yeah, being out, being outside is it. It has its pros and its cons. But when we do, you know, the the creative forces do kind of come together in Preston. It does. It seems it's very supportive and it's very um, yeah, mutually beneficial. <laughs>